Hi class. Um, I did find this PDF file of chapter four, Life in the Towns. Um, so I'll be sharing it with you. Hopefully we can try to find more of these chapters in PDF files when we're actually in class. Um, so you will not need to bring your book to class. But this starts out um, just like our book. Um, it, I think it's just a different year of publication. But um, go ahead and, and feel free to take notes now or replay this to take notes. I will talk about this more in class. Uh, the medieval towns, they really developed around castles and monasteries and along trade routes. So this is now we're talking about going outside of the manors. These towns, they were surrounded by thick stone walls for protection, um, but inside the walls were homes and businesses on very narrow, unpaved streets. Uh, you can kind of see in this picture, it looks like there were colorful shop signs. Um, there was an open square used as a public gathering. Um, there was, again, not a lot of people that could read, so a lot of those signs didn't actually have words on them, but pictures that would, or symbols that would represent whatever they were selling. Now, again, this, this started to take place outside of these manors. The towns really developed in the high Middle Ages um, due to improvements in just agricultural agriculture and the revival of trade. The farmers had had a surplus of crops, so they decided to sell them outside of the manors and in these town markets. Merchants then, of course, became really prominent residents of towns, and people began to specialize in making specific goods, like, um, for instance, maybe the seaport towns uh, served, um, you know, especially the seaport towns, really, um, or any place along the river served as really great areas for trade, but maybe specific goods, you know, were somebody that could was really good at making the shoes, the cobbler, somebody else that was really good at uh, um, making blown glass. This is when these crafts um, and artisans really started to come into play. Now we don't talk about this yet, but this kind of leads towards the end of feudalism, people leaving these manors. Now, um, let me scroll through here. Uh, this, again, talks about the growth of trade and the surplus of the crops, um, people deciding to leave. Now, um, what started to come about um, with this was that were these guilds. So both trade and the production of goods were overseen by these, th these organizations called guilds, which are kind of qu equivalent to like unions. Um, they were there to protect you, the consumer but also the people that were in part of the guild that created these were working in the guilds. So they would help people, um, you know, in that certain field of work and, and make sure that they were getting paid enough money, um, that they were working reasonable hours, but also that you were getting a really high standard of quality item, um, trade and commerce, uh first dealt mostly with like luxury items and not things that you would need every day um but then expanded to things that you might need like food clothing uh, household items specialty goods it wasn't just for the rich it was for everybody and these guilds we'll talk about more um as the year progresses and we get a little bit more into the renaissance period um they did have to pay dues to be a part of a guild but people were happy to do that because then they were kind of protected. Um, and it's something that you do if you're part of a union, you pay that fee so that you're protected. Um, you're, you're made sure that you're paid, that um, you're getting quality materials to give out a quality product. Um, this I see here talks a little bit about apprenticeship and it wasn't easy to become a guild member, but you could, um, at a very young age, start to become an apprentice to somebody that had a, a trade, that knew how to be um, a blacksmith or a glass blower or a seamstress. And you could start to work for them and eventually become what was called a journeyman. And once you become a journeyman, then you take that craft, that skill you've learned and go out into the real world. 
until eventually you are a master and then you would own your own business. Um, now, not everyone during this time period prospered. You know, it wasn't great for everybody. Uh, um, in Christian Europe, people were often really prejudiced um, against the Jews, and it was difficult for Jews to earn a living. Um, they could not own land, and they were often targets of violence. Um, now, this is way before the Holocaust that this was going on. This had had to do with just them not believing in the same prophet that that they did. Um, even though at one point, remember, we said that the Muslims, the Jews, and the Christians all did get along because they believed in the same God and they had a holy book. Um, but this, in the long run, financially helped um, the Jews because the Jews eventually, and you'll learn, um, started to become bankers. And they started to, when commerce started to use money, um, they started to um, loan out money. And um, in the Christian faith, you couldn't do that. It was, there was something against um, loaning money or taxing money that would be against the religion, but it wasn't if you were a Jew. And so they wound up being the bank owners and wound up making a lot of money. Um, similarly, that happens, I don't know if you remember when you learned about um, the, the 49ers, the gold rush, same thing happened to the Chinese. Okay, but again, I'm going off topic. All right, so basically daily life in the Middle Ages was difficult. All right, um, oftentimes the children died before they became, became adults. They did not have a very good <laughs> healthcare system. There was none. People died of diseases like leprosy and the bubonic plague. Um, poor families often shared homes with other people. A typical family would cook, eat, sleep, live in one room. And I talked about the dangers of that, of, about having like, you know, basically the cooking pot right there. Oh, you kind of see that cooking pot right in the middle of the house. You're not really the safest um, of quarters. Now, um, businesses um, and the wealthy families, they had very, very nice houses and they would have, um, you know, separate living quarters. They might even have their business office, living quarters, servant quarters, all um, on different levels of their house. But even these houses were cold and dark. Um, they called these this time period the dark ages um, because it was dark. There was no light and there were not a lot of windows um, and there was no, you know, heating. It was cold cold in the winter and, you know, hot in the summers. And, um, but actually that dark ages comes from it being actually dark. There was no light, no, no electricity. Um, men uh, might be seen working as merchants or in some type of skilled trade, such as cloth making, stone masonry. Um, we talked about these, a blacksmith, these other type of things. But most women, man, where they were in charge of their homes, they managed the homes, they took care of their families. Um, some girls and boys attended school, but usually they were like the wealthy kids, the wealthy children. And they, they got to learn things like painting and playing music. Those were actually not things that a normal child would have the luxury of doing. Um, some children worked as apprentices to learn a trade. Um, but of course, you know, kids were kids. And so for leisure, they played with dolls and other toys. Um, they played um, badminton, kind of like a lawn bowling game, blind man's bluff. Um, they rolled hoops, you know, probably not as exciting as the games you play, but they entertained themselves. Um, by the way, the first toy ever created was a stick. Playing with a stick. Okay, anyway, just a little bit of trivia. Um, now, adults, on the other hand, you know, they played, they had cards. They played card games, board games, dice games, danced. Um, people always wanted to have luxury or leisurely time, I should say. Now, one thing that you should know, um, or I talked about the disease. Um, oh, crime and punishment. I don't know if this, yeah, it does talk about crime and punishment. Um, the medieval towns, they, they were unhealthy. They were noisy. They were crowded. They were often dangerous. Uh, there was no really form of law, law 
Um, you might have a night watchman that would go around the streets at night, but he couldn't be everywhere, right? You didn't have police officers driving around town, making sure things were okay. You didn't have phones to call somebody if things didn't look like they were okay. Um, and so it really wasn't the safest of times. Um, there was something that they called trial by order or by combat. And these kind of punishments were really harsh. So basically, if they thought you were guilty, there was no judge and jury. You were, um, you had to fight someone to the death or they would dump you in a well. And um, if you drowned, yeah, listen to this. If you drowned, you were guilty. If the water rejected you, meaning it kicked you out, um, then you were innocent. Um, but unfortunately, if you're rejected from the water, you're usually, wait a second, do I have that backwards? Unfortunately, a person who floated instead of drowning was declared guilty because he or she had been rejected from the water. Okay, so so that was it. If you If you drowned, you were guilty. If you drowned, but then your body came back up to the top of the water, you were innocent. However, once that happened, you were already dead. So once you were going to be charged or had to deal with um, trial by order, you were doomed. They were pretty much, you were guilty before they even, you know, decided your fate. Um, so it was really harsh. Um, eventually, though, an independent judiciary um, system and a growing body of common law led to trials based more on written and oral evidence. So that does change, and it does change rather quickly. Um, here it talks a little bit about that here. The lesser crimes, maybe people were fined and they were put in the stocks to stand and be humiliated in public. But uh, doing something more, you know, was like stealing, highway robbery, treason, murder, um, you might be just burned at the stake um, or hung, uh, not even get the opportunity to have trial by order, which may in the long run may actually be better. I don't know. It was pretty, pretty severe. Um, oh, we talked about here common law. Um, the decisions of the royal judge, judges contributed to a growing body of common law. That's what I was just saying. Um, an independent judiciary, a court system. So English common law would become an important safeguard of individual rights and which we kind of talked about briefly in another chapter, kind of started to lead the way to a judicial system, um, juries, um, people having more of a say. Um, let's see, we already talked about some of the leisure. Okay. Oh, and this, though, this is kind of nice. Maybe I'll post this because it has a little summary here of the guilds. The homes, disease, government punishment, leisure, and entertainment. I will. I will try to see if I can upload this for you. And um, we'll talk more about Chapter 4 tomorrow.